Are you going to hold the pillow for I the... I am. I, th I think I'm just going to hold this forever now. Just like the most incredible brand awareness that I've seen. Hello and welcome to Girls With Goals. I'm Neve Marr. It is the 102nd episode. You're very welcome. Last week we had more Higgins, of course. And this week, arguably... Someone even more famous, Cassie Stokes, yes, joins me. the more Higgins, I think so. And Girls With Goals. <laughs> Definitely not as controversial. Actually, I, I don't think this interview is going to be anywhere near as good as her. I'm the biggest fan of Maura. She's amazing. Yeah. She is She's quite really amazing. Good. Are you going to hold the pillow for I the... I am. I, th I think I'm just going to hold this forever now. Just like the most incredible brand awareness that I've seen. Her, because I'm a new team member. You are me. a new team member, yes. How are you getting on? Well, I haven't started yet, so um, very well. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to start at the at the beginning of November. Mm -hmm. So I decided everyone, you know, people say take some time off, yeah. chill. You're taking a few weeks. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. take a few weeks and relax. Um, you literally were the talk of the town when we announced <laughs> that you were coming over to her. Like, you were talking and talking about the next chapter and... It was hilarious on your social media how how you portrayed that. And we're going to get into that. We're going to get into the new digital role. We're going yeah. to talk a little bit about expose and stuff like that. But first, I want to go a little bit back. I want to back. go a little bit further back Great. and talk about baby Cassie. But amazing, like we do every show, six words or less. So you have to describe yourself in six words or less. It can be a sentence, it can be this, words. Yeah, this is like one of those difficult things. Mm. I think you could think about this forever. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I have, because last time I was like, oh, she's probably gonna ask me those six words again. Yeah. So let's go, I was, I, I, last time I don't think I did myself any ju justice. I was just like, a Cassie, um, <laughs> alive, Cassie. a woman, <laughs> that's me. Um, let's go with ambitious, fun, um, Interested mm -hmm. and um, a laugh. Yeah, a well, is a word too. I'm going to describe it myself. Absolutely is. Laugh. <laughs> that was great. I love that. Interested. Interested. Big word. So you yeah. mean in like in, in things? In things. In bits. In things. I get very invested, and I'm very interested in finding out more about so many different things. Like I'm interested in life. That's amazing. It's a good. <laughs> it's a good word. Um, good as well because obviously you're going to be coming and working here, so I, I want am. you to be interested in yeah, a exactly. lot <laughs> of things. Oh no, I'm not interested in digital or yeah. her at no, all. No, no, no. <laughs> Obviously. Um, so yeah, baby Cassie, let's go back. I want to talk, because I, I think everybody knows who you are. We know you from the telly box. Yes. A lot of people know about your career progression and stuff, which we are going to talk about. But growing up, what did you want to be when you were young? Growing up, I actually wanted to be a marine biologist slash model. Like, oh, like nice. I really thought very highly of myself, didn't I? Which is ambitious, you know? <laughs> <laughs> interested back to in the myself. words yes um yeah no i was so into the animals in the sea like sharks i was i was shark obsessed okay i'm terrified yeah. of sharks like yeah. now maybe i learned too much about it but every book every birthday christmas anytime anyone was getting me a present it would be like shark book please okay. and this one thanks um, so i knew way too much about what's going on in the sea which is why now you know i like the sea but you know, I wouldn't like to be dropped into the middle of it. There's a lot going on in the sea. <laughs> I don't think it's many people mate. would. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a legit fear. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's that's what I wanted to be, which is just it's so funny. And then part-time model. So, so full-time marine biologist. Part-time model. Part-time so, model. Uh, yeah, I, was this around kind of the America's Next Top Model era? No, this is just around when I was about probably nine years old. You're I was like... Looking at your angles. Yeah, mum. No, not even. I think I was just like... Mm. Yeah, that seems great. I guess it was probably because maybe I was like, ah, they watch their models and then some of them go out and they could do the marine biology. I think I just thought logistically it would work well if okay. I was by the water. Yeah. I might as well be modeling part time. It makes sense. Tough career paths <laughs> to follow in terms of like huge amount of research and study into being a marine biologist. Um, not as much with <laughs> modeling, but at the same time, like tough business. Very tough. To crack into. I guess I just wanted to challenge myself from the beginning. Yeah. So then, you know, I took a few steps back and I was like, oh, I'll go into media, but then realized it's just as tough, actually. You it, know? Re it really is. Just as competitive. It is just as tough, <laughs> yeah. I mean, at what point did the shark model situation dream die for you? I mean, I don't think it has yet. Okay, perfect. I, it's always nice to have, you yeah. know, thoughts. Other than being afraid of 
the middle of the sea and actually never wanting to go in and see sharks or anything like that. That's just, I think that's, uh, once I get over that, do a bit of hypnotherapy. Right. I'll be fine. Is it like just the middle of the sea or is it I'd be afraid of the middle swims. of the sea. Okay, so <laughs> like you're not afraid to like get jump, in the water. jump off high no. rock or anything. Okay, No, cool. no, no. I, I just, I just did that earlier. I do that every morning. Do you really? Um, no, I wish. Can sea swims are very, like, they're so very good hip at the moment. Really good for Everybody you. does them and everybody Instagrams and I applaud that. Yeah, I do it. Um, I've never done it. Yeah, you have to do it. I know, and I'm from Port Marnock, so I'm right there by the sea. It's oh, beautiful. Oh, it's really nice there. I even went swimming in, you know, where Dolly Mount, where mm -hmm. it's actually, I think, polluted at right. the moment. But anyway, I'm here. I was fine. Just a, a few plasters in my hair and I was grand. Yeah, no, it's really Instagrammable. It's like good content. Yeah. You need to go there and do it. And then everyone's like, oh, I can't believe you went and did that. And you're like, did it a few days ago. Just took loads of pictures. And it refreshes you. And it you actually you. feel really good after it. I have to say, I have really... I, I haven't done that in years. And I'm always jealous of people who do it on Christmas Day. Yeah. You know, those families and Never they go... It. Yeah. And it, you're like, oh, that's actually a really nice way to spend some hours on Christmas Day because the rest are like... You're just okay. like waiting, waiting to for eat the fish. And, exactly. then, and then napping and, exactly. and chocolate and stuff like that. So yeah. I've always been jealous of those families. And now this year I'm definitely going to do it because I started doing it this summer. And it's just the whole thought of, oh, will I wear, what bikini will I wear? All those kind of things that really mean nothing. Or yeah. do I have fake tan on? Blah, 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 blah. When you actually just forget about just all that and you sea. just go jump in the sea and your body's like, ah, ah, help. It's almost like your body goes into... I don't know, survival mode because yeah. it's so freezing. That like fight when you or get flight. Out, yeah, yeah, fight or flight. I swear, when I get out of that seat, you could swear I'd been on a night, like I went to the pub and had a few drinks. I'm in like the best mood ever. Wow. So, I, like my mom's always like, oh, did you did you go for a few drinks afterwards? And I'm like, no, it's the sea. Okay, I'm going to have <laughs> to amazing. try it then because I, I live in Port Marnock now as well. I'm back there and I'm very close to the sea. Yeah. Um, but I saw a really funny meme that kind of has stuck with me about the whole sea swims. Uh, some girl put up that like, you know, when you're coming out of coppers and you yeah. know that those guys from the lucky pair have already been into the oh, sea yeah. and have already like ran at three kilometers this and is true. have already made their own granola and stuff like that. Like it's very good for people and it seems to be something that people do for their kind of mentality as well, which is good. But I also thought that was really funny. Yeah, but that's true. We, here, listen, we sometimes all like you want coming snooze, home. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And we all like leaving somewhere yes. when you know that someone's swimming in the sea and yes, grey stones. I know. You know, you're you're coming out like, the black door days. and you're like, oh, that's bright. Yes. There's a sea swim is definitely happening <laughs> yeah, right somewhere. Now. wonder sea if I can make it. Sea swim after party. Yeah, mm, I don't mm, know. Mm. Um, so yeah, so that that's, I, I kind of, I uh, not that I, I've given up on those ambitions. It's always nice to have them. I mm. mean, it's hilarious to say what you, when I know exactly what I actually wanted to do as a kid because I was like, my room was full of shark books. I wanted to be a marine biologist. Yeah. Um, well, I, I also loved doing like, making radio shows and like videoing and you know I think I was always meant for some kind of media or just standing in front of people in some kind of way yeah um but when I when I was in school I like I guess some well, I, my cousin my cousin's friend in a few years above me had said oh maybe you should try me like media because in my school it's kind of like you know go be a lawyer or a I don't know, doctor or something that yeah. I definitely couldn't be. You know, that's, I'm not giving up on myself. I'm just saying I wouldn't want to be. Yeah. Um, so I, I was like, yeah, media actually might work. I do actually enjoy talking to people and I do I like made, making radio shows in school and things yeah. like that. So I went to Bally Firmit and then it just became pretty clear that that's what I actually really did like do, doing. I mean, yeah. in school, I was also an absolute messer. So, you know, my favorite class was classical studies because I would just make up these stories, like the stories to me could be movies or mm. like uh, TV shows. So yeah. um, I always loved getting up and reading and things like that and being like, oh, and then, you know, there was a Cassandra in classical st studies and things like that. So that was one of my favorite stories in yeah. the Trojan War. Um, and it just made sense. So I went to Bali for a minute and then it all just came together, met some amazing people who were also out there studying. And uh, yeah, then it was like, yep, I think it, you should be in media. It's funny because like people have asked me as well, you know, like how I kind of got into my career and stuff like that. And yeah. there wasn't necessarily one definitive moment when I woke up and I was just like, I want to work in yeah. the media. But it is, I think, it's something to do with the personality that you have as well. A lot of it is, honestly, being interested yeah. in p other people and also in stories. Yeah, that's And it. kind of just telling those. Like, I used to make newspapers, like, when I was young, <laughs> and I would, like, sellotape them together. Yeah. And if I was feeling really saucy, I'd punch holes in them and like tie a string through Ooh. them. I was like, eh. glam. Look Wait, at this. Look at this. Mom.
Look how this turns yes. <laughs> compared to the sellotape one from last week. I know. So I would like distribute my own like, um, basically I had a media organization when I was eight. So I used to distribute these to <laughs> my family. They didn't want them, but like, they're like, oh great, another great and Eve, another novel for me to read. Yes. But like that, you know, and then I would pretend to be a weather girl in front of See? nothing. It and just makes sense. It just kind you of know makes those sense. kids. You're like, yeah. you're gonna be a media. It's a tough. It's a tough industry though to kind of completely get into as well. So oh, yeah, you went to college. I was in Bally Firmish, yeah. And what were you studying? Um, media, like general media. Yeah. And or, well, I did presentation and performance first. Okay. Uh, which involved like dancing and stuff like that, which was hilarious. So is I this am like not the presentation? As in, like to to be a presenter? Yeah. Oh, why is dancing involved in that? A performance. Why not? Why not? Oh. Why not? Is it? Wasn't dancing involved in every degree? That's what they told me. <laughs> that was probably, I was okay at dancing. Like, yeah. you, I'd have to just make it funny because it's like, oh, wow. Okay. Like, I'm, I don't have incredible coordination when it comes to dancing. When it comes to sharks, <laughs> incredibly <laughs> coordinated. When it comes to dancing, absolutely not. You could do an interpretive dance yes, involving always. sharks. Of course. Katy Perry did it. I feel like sharks um, is going to run through this yeah, entire Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, so uh, that's what I started out doing. I think that was the first, like it was first year or two years, and yeah. then went into general media. Um, and then actually started working in TV3, which is now Virgin Media. Mm. Um, so I was working on the promos team, started editing and then doing voiceovers. Um, and I was working there like any hours I wasn't going to college really. Yeah. So sometimes I'd be like, no, I don't have college today. Can I come in? Nice. Um, you know how it is. Mm. Um, yeah, so I, I, yeah, I really, I loved it actually. And I really loved um, the edit, like the editing. So I was learning it in, in Valley Ferment as well as yeah. kind of learning it in uh, TV3. You know, it's all about being practical, to be honest, and it just really getting is. your hands on everything and just doing it. You kind of have to be yeah. there, yeah. And so, like, it was in TV3 progressed. at the time that, like, you know, you did your first on-air, essentially, yeah. like, thing, and it was with Vincent Brown, right? Exactly. Well, mm. it, it actually came up um, that I, there was, they were doing a, a young news show on 3E, so then FYI. I was the FYI, ah. that's the one. So there was a uh, position for a tech reporter. Okay. Hello. Tech reporter. That's give me, me sharks. It was great give me because tech. yeah, I'm finished with sharks. Now I'm into tech. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, like it was around the time it was like 2009, 2010, yeah. mm. maybe it would have been at, like pretty much when Instagram and everything was when coming was out. Starting. When Justin Bieber was absolutely like no one, yeah, and just being picked up by Usher kind of thing. It was right. all because I was always like, is it Justin Bieber? Because I mean, he is in, from Canada, what? and that could be the French side of Canada. Like. What? That, what an odd time reference. I know. To like talk about Bieber in terms of like the the year that it was. So like Bieber had the hair and Bieber was probably doing the baby, yeah, baby, 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 baby thing. Baby, uh, even I think baby, it was baby, just baby, that baby. he had just, baby, baby, baby. he had just been picked up basically on the street by yeah. Usher and all mm. that kind of stuff. And, um, and he, one of his videos had just hit like whatever. Yeah. W one million maybe at the time so or YouTube something like that. So YouTube was like just. Exactly. So mm. ju it was, it was actually quite interesting now mm. that I think back. Um, and yeah, so then, and then after that, I, well, while I was doing that, I'd always sat beside Vincent Brown because he'd come in at a certain, like a bit later and I'd always be in there later because I just, I had, like had an interest and yeah. I'd just be cutting different packages and looking up different things. And I kind of, not that I had nothing else to do, but like I had low, I had other things. I did have friends and yeah. I did have a boyfriend, but I guess, Maybe if I had a girlfriend, I would have gone home from work. <laughs> no. um, I, yeah, I just kind of like would sit around. I was just interested to see what was going on. Yeah. Um, and that Vincent Brown, he'd sit like beside me. And Vincent Brown is one person that just loves people mm. who like, you know, just kind of speak their mind really yeah. and, and also have an interest. Mm. And we just got talking and... Um, like we used to have such a laugh, the two of us, and my sense of humor would be not far off his. And yeah. he was always like surprised by it. He'd be like, ah, but that's funny. Okay. I feel like sometimes, I mean, like you're describing him here and I think that it's probably not a, uh, an incorrect word to say maybe he was a mentor figure to you. Definitely, yeah. And I feel like when you're young in the media industry, sometimes that can happen with the oddest people that you would never expect. Like when I was in radio around the same time, yeah. Um, I was working with Tom McGurk okay. and like literally when I met him the first time, I, well, I was like, <gasps> I was like, hello, sir. 
Can you hear me? Yes. I'm down here. <laughs> and like, again, it was at the time when Twitter was literally just like people were tweeting their first tweet and yeah. being like, is this Twitter? And I would explain it all yeah. to him and like, you know, I'd be like... So you were the same kind of thing. Like the same kind the of... the same person. It was pretty much <laughs> the same kind of thing. Yeah, but it's funny because those relationships can come out of like literally nothing. Like I honestly no. was so scared of him the first time I met him. I was just going to run through his legs and keep going. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, well, the same yeah. kind of thing because you hear you're all these things. You're kind of yeah. like, you know, and, mm. and people are intimidated. But like you said, it just, I mean, relationships form from such b different scenarios. You can That's never it. expect it. You could almost look at, you could be like, I think that person's supposed to be my mentor. And then yeah. in walks this and you're like, that person terrifies me. And then you're just like, oh, so it turns out that person's my mentor. Yeah. So, uh, Sorry, yeah. Tom McGurk wasn't my mentor, by the way. He, he was just good crack. But, <laughs> he was uh, just good. Yeah. yeah I, I would call he was Vincent good crack. was great crack, yeah. but actually turned out to be a mentor and just, uh, you know, had really nice, uh, I, I just kind of liked the way he was. Right. And, you know, mm -hmm. he always he said things that just made sense. You know, when he asked me to be on the show, I was like, <laughs> absolutely not. You know, because I was just like, Okay, I don't think I said absolutely not because I am a person who goes yes the and then like ah, yeah. and panics about it. Mm. I'm always like just say yes because it opens up so many doors and figure it out. Like yeah. if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's not the end of the world. Mm. Worst case scenario is not the worst case scenario. And um, but you did have experience at this time, right? Like you weren't going I was in cold. On air. Yeah. yeah, I was doing live news every day. Yeah. So, but I mean, this was a this is a different kettle of fish. This mm. is late time. Politi like a, a political show, people have lots of opinions on political shows, you know, so absolutely on everything, like yeah. literally, oh, why, why does she smile and mm. why does she only have one dimple? You know, yeah. that kind of stuff, yeah. which is like, ah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and so it was like, this is like a 20, you know, three, 24, 23, 24 four year old, which as I, I mean, looking back now, you're not very confident at all. I'm, mm. if someone said anything about any part of me now, I'm like, Okay, well, yeah. this is me. I, I'm pretty happy with myself and I can't really change a dimple on my face. Yeah. Um, whereas then it was really intimidating and it was also this world of people with lots of opinions and being like, she doesn't know anything about politics. You know, yeah. I knew the bare minimum, like mm. what we all kind of, well, not what we all kind of did, but most of myself and my friends did. Mm. And I said that to him. I was like, but I don't know anything about politics. And he was like, well, did you know anything about tech? Did you know anything about like your favorite music when you, you, you didn't know what your favorite music was, did you? No, yeah. you'd kind of learn. You learn those things, so learn. And I was like, okay. And that's a really nice way to look at things yeah. because especially in the world of media, like y you can be an all-rounder and everything like that, which is uh, incredible, but you can learn about everything. You know? And so you actually, cause you know, you do go, oh, but they know they can do everything, but they don't have a specific, but really you can learn definitely i think there's certain there's certain elements of like i think when you're young in your career and when you're going into it like you do have to fake it until you make it do you Completely. know what i mean I'm and still, like, well, i'm still doing it. i don't know about uh, you but but i mean i think that anybody who says that they didn't do that especially when they're like young and maybe in their early 20s coming yeah. in uh, is not being truthful you know like i mean i remember being at a, a referendum count and my my head of news like telling me to just run over there and get this interview with this politician real fast we needed to make it to the top of the hour. And I was like, absolutely, gone, I'm gone. I didn't know what this politician looked like. I didn't know who he was. Yeah, I've got him. I was just looking around for men in suits and there was a lot of them. So, I mean, I don't know. I just ended up like literally grabbing someone's computer and Googling what he was yeah. and then went, got the interview and got it on air. And I, I didn't have a breeze. No, you just do it. Of what I was doing, but you just did it. And then after I was going like, is that okay? And yeah. we were like, yeah, it was great. We're great. Now go go do that. And they just move on to the next thing yeah. so fast that you almost don't even have time to think about whether no, you, you did a good job. You have to take the opportunities as they come. Exactly. You and know? listen, sometimes they can not go so well. Yeah. Sometimes you'd be like, oops, I think that was the wrong person. They're like, that was the wrong person. And you call them well. something, some other name. And you're yeah. like, okay. And you move on. Yeah. Like it can, it can go one or two ways. But like I said, worst case scenario is actually not the worst case scenario. And you kind yeah. of learn from it and you're like, oh, next time I'm just going to ask general questions and not say their name. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> exactly. It can, it can be done as well. Um, and then, so what was it like the first time that you went on that show? Like, were you, were you nervous? So nervous. And do you have like, do you so have that nervous. tape or did you keep a copy I of it or I probably do actually, yeah. I, I should actually get back in touch with Virgin Media and get it. Yeah. But um, no, I, I, 
it should be somewhere. I don't have it. I haven't seen it. Oh, but I just know the feeling. I was so nervous. Those lights were the brightest lights and the hottest. Uh, that studio was the hottest studio, even though I'd been in there a few hours before doing my own news. And the lights were the absolute brightest. It was so intimidating when it came to me about reading out the tweets. I remember my first one, uh, I think Joan Bruton, mm -hmm. she was on it, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Um, and she had ta been talking about haranguing. Burton. Burton, sorry, mm. Burton. Haranguing. And um, that was the whole thing. She right. was like, stop haranguing me, Vincent. And then haranguing you. I'm not haranguing. And it just went on and on. And that was the sentence from the whole, yeah. like pretty much that's all what Twitter was talking about. And it was just, I just had to read out some of the tweets from the tweet machine. But like when Vincent came, like it was just terrifying when he was like, Cassie, okay, so what, what is Twitter saying? I was yeah. like, well, I started with something easier. I was like, I want to go in light. So mm. it's like, that's me. I talked about his tie. I was like, well, uh, they, they're loving your purple tie today, Vincent. So it was, I was like, I wanted to bring an element of me. Nice. And I was, I was questioning it the whole time. Then I was just like, just do, do it. it. Yeah. Just do it. You know what? What's exactly worst yeah. case? What's the worst that can happen? Nothing. Um, and yeah, I just kind of continued from that. And then we talked about haranguing. Like, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the buzz. I looked at Twitter after. I probably shouldn't have because, you know, every second one was like something like, who's this? Blah, 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 blah. That kind of thing. Like, which I, it definitely did get to me at, yeah. that, at that age. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to go on again. Like, why would I put myself out there to just be insulted? Were people Whereas, being harsh? Yeah, pe well, people are, you know yeah. what I mean? And people still are I to everyone. People, I know people definitely are harsh, 100%. I thought maybe like back then, especially, you know, you being a new face essentially. Well, not obviously you had your own show, but like being a new face on that show. Oh yeah, no, there's no, still people. people yeah, no, just... I'm like, people would still be, yeah, like people are people. Yeah. You know I mean? it's, it's fine. And also you only appreciate the good people when there's bad people involved. And I'm not saying they're bad people. It's just sometimes they people tweet express bad their opinions more so than other people. Yes. Um, but it, again, the negative tweets make you appreciate the good tweets, even though the negative ones really stuck with me a bit yeah. longer. Um, so for the next one, I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. Like, but could not sleep. When you go on a buzz like that, you are complete, you're awake for hours. The I think I, yeah, yeah, I didn't go to sleep until probably four in the morning and then I was wow. up for work and I was like, okay, but I did it as much as I could and I really enjoyed it, um, yeah. loved it, learned so much. And it really challenged me. And uh, I was, I think once I did that, I was like, well, any other shows? Like, it's yeah. nothing compared to that. I'll do it. Let's go. Um, so it gave me nice confidence. Yeah. And I learned loads yeah. about politics. <laughs> oh, there you go. And about Twitter. Um, and then you left. And then I left, yeah. And then you left. You, you left our shores. Uh, yeah, I left. I went to Toronto. Um, I was just a little, I got a little bored mm. then. And I was, and it was at like well, around 2012, 2013 mm. when things weren't incredible yeah. here. A lot of people um, were going around that time. Every, all of my friends yeah. had gone, uh, either Australia, London or, or like New York. And it was just I'm not, like I was one of the few that were left here, uh, which was great. We all love Ireland. Yeah. Um, but I, I, everyone kept saying, well, you have a job, so why would you leave? It was yeah. kind of that mentality. And I, because I, I'm a Canadian citizen, mm. I, I didn't think I was taking as much of a risk if I was leaving my job. And also, I didn't think that was a reason, you know, to not go and explore and, and yeah. experience. Sorry, we missed that in the baby Cassie section. Yes, I was, I'm, I was Canadian. I am Canadian. You were Canadian. I lived in Canada from the age of one to the age of 10, um, 10 or 11. Uh, so I, yeah, I was born here just, in Ireland. Oh, yeah, so you're so. born in Ireland. I'm lived, Irish. Lived yeah, in Canada. Irish. Lived in Canada. And then came then back. Then came back. Then went back. Um, so yeah, so I just went, you know, oh, this is what I want to do. I was just mm. a little bit bored. And I was like, um, how about I just give myself a, a treat and move somewhere and see how I get on. Yeah, it's um, not like you stepped away from media though. You like pretty much went in and started. I, well, I, you know what, I actually, I, I didn't think I would have to. I was like, yeah. I've all had this experience and blah, blah, blah. But you know, when you move place and everyone knows how different industries work, kind of works through word of mouth. You build yourself up, you know people, like it does work yeah. through connections a lot. So I did try for a good few months um, trying to get a job in a few of the media companies over there. I had all the experience and there was some jobs I'd walk out of the interview and I'd be like, Nailed it. Nailed it, mine. But you forget about the person that's been in that company waiting to get that position. Right. Who obviously is going to get it yeah. before you because, well, not obviously, some but people, you, sometimes so, it just happens like that. A lot like of that. people don't get that, but it is it really does like about your connections yes, as well. And, it, and the, you know what, they've been working just as hard yeah. and they, they know them better. They know that, like, it, you know, they're going to be... Uh, 
exactly the way they have been for the last few years and they've been working hard and that kind yeah. of stuff. So, you know, it, it, there's, a, there good, there's good and bad sides to Definitely. it. Um, so I, I, I remember just being like, oh, okay, maybe this isn't actually going to work out as yeah. easy as I thought. It was not as easy as I thought, um, which is great because it taught me so much. So I worked in an Irish pub. Um, well, actually, no, my first job that I got over there was in a Jamaican restaurant. Nice. Yeah, Jamaican mm. bar. Very cool. Tried ginger beer for the first time. Oh. And they all laughed at me because like everyone that worked there, they were like, you've never tried ginger beer. And I was like, I don't, I don't even I've, know what you're talking I've about. I've never tried ginger beer. I was like, I, I don't what is think, that? Yeah. Is it a beer? And, and it was it's like, not it's a the beer. strongest is beer it? thing. Well, oh. you can get alcoholic ones now, oh. but this one was not. It was just like a really strong ginger infusion, essentially. Um, but I delightful, had a, is it? It is delightful, oh. actually. If you, yeah, it is delightful if you mix it with a beer, an alcoholic <laughs> okay. beer or something. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I uh, I worked there for a few months. Had a great had a great laugh, and then worked in an Irish pub. So one of my friends was like, you should try and go there. They Always hire Irish people. Yeah. Called PJ O'Brien's. It's in Toronto. If you're going to Toronto, go. They will hire you if you're <laughs> Irish. They are incredible. You literally just have to walk in and talk to someone. They're like, okay, when can you start? Amazing. It's the Quins. They own it. Um, and they just adore Irish people. And they also hel love helping people out. So right. it's kind of like a nice stepping stone yeah. for everyone. Um, so I moved, yeah, worked there and absolutely loved it. And then it came a job, like job in media came through one of the connections there. So oh. um, someone who used to eat there all the time was like, oh, my wife actually works in a production company. Let me put you in touch. Yeah. The connection things, nice. it happens. So she then I, him. exactly. Mm -hmm. So then it just kind of worked out like that. In the meantime, I was having the time of my life working in that Irish pub. Like really? we just had so much fun. I met so many people, some people who I would call such good friends of mine yeah. now. Uh, it made it gave me a chance to experience you know Toronto in such a different way mm. and like laugh I don't think I ever laughed so much and also learned so much about the service industry which is, I think is one of the most incredible things to learn about because I you know I, we all go out to eat dinner. Yeah, it's one of the toughest industries one of the I've toughest ever. And people industries. say media industry is tough. No. It absolutely is. But the I industry. worked in bars and restaurants as well and. It's tough. It yeah. is really tough. It's really tough. And yeah, so I I love that. It gave me so much respect mm -hmm. for now. Every time I go out for dinner, I, yeah. I'm respectful of the situation I'm in, and um, and appreciate really good service. Yes, absolutely. Um, so like I I was so I would always be thrilled with myself. Like you get amazing tip, and it was you know sometimes it's a little bit easy because you'd be like yeah no they, well they'd always want to first of all talk to you as soon so the whole dinner you know they'd be nice and friendly and blah blah mm. blah. So it was like it was a bar lounge kind of thing in the financial district. So it was always packed. Always it was busy. a great spot yeah. to be. Um, so you really had to be a top server. <clears throat> um, so when you go and you know serve the table and you'd be having the chats and blah blah blah. But they'd always want to talk loads and really get to know you as soon as you picked up their plates from their dinner so you'd be like one two three you know picking them all yeah. up and you just literally your arms would be about just, to fall off and they'd be like so whereabouts in ireland are you from and you'd be like now you want to ask me that now i've been over about five times yeah. in between you arriving here and now you want to talk about where i'm from when i'm holding all these plates so but the place was full with amazing bussers the yeah. lads they would come and take the plates off you and you'd be like thanks so much and they'd go from Dublin, blah, 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 blah. And yeah. you'd always try and get in like, you know, I'm really trying, I'm trying to get home now for this Christmas. And they'd be like, oh, really? It's like, Cassie, was that like yes, a little, a little trick? trick? Like, of course, <laughs> you have to take advantage of situations you're in. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah so, uh, you'd, I mean, you'd have, you would have a great trying laugh. Trying to make it home. I have to make it home oh, on the yeah. boat. I have to get the boat. Leave it soon. <laughs> <laughs> Tough times. <laughs> And then another boat and another boat. And then just and the then I'm in Santorini. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, it was it really taught me and I, I was I really I loved being a server. I yeah. enjoyed it. Which is funny when I uh, found out about uh Exposia, I was like, maybe I'll go being a ser but I'll be yeah. a server again. <laughs> I mean the thing is you're interacting with people constantly. Exactly. So I mean there's I've a an interest in people. There's so. a similarity in that, yeah. Completely. But so, so it was a chance kind of meeting with someone that made a connection exactly. that brought you made back in. Made a connection, in. brought me back in. Mm. I worked for a production company and worked on actually live events, so um, live award shows, which was like so interesting in yeah. Big Brother Canada. So they did loads of things. And then through that, met someone else, was able to get into another production company and then worked for a food show called Food Factory, which is on the Food Network. Uh, shows in like 
87 different countries, 40 different languages. You know, you had That's to talk. Incredible. It was so much fun. So like we would focus on food that was really well known, like Hershey's, mm. Doritos, and we would go to the factories in the US. Yeah. Um, and, and so I was a producer on that. So go to the factories in the US and see how it's all made. So the show was basically just about the Dorito starts as a corn, yeah. you know what I mean, kind of thing, and then okay. it turns into a chip, or like the Hershey's thing. There was millions of Hershey's kisses just going around on conveyor belts. I don't like Hershey's, there I said I it. do like it, and I know only because don't I think, think I grew up tastes, in Canada. It tastes weird. It does, and I think it it's because weird. I like it because I grew up there. Yeah. That's the only reason. Everyone else hates it, Love and the I totally idea get it. of it, love the way their little kisses. Cute. I'm very, very behind that, love yeah. the packaging. I think the chocolate tastes weird. I think any chocolate that's not our chocolate. Yeah, I know. Tastes a bit weird, though. Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. Not into American I do, I do like it, though. But yeah. it, I mean, to see the Hershey's things go around, that was quite fantastic. Yeah. And then I got into entertainment tonight in Canada okay. um, while I was working there. So I went for actually like a hosting competition to be a presenter. And I ended up winning it. I was lucky that it was also happening in March, uh, which Paddy's Day. And I right. worked in a pub and went to that pub. And they were promoting it in all their pubs all over Toronto. So. Yeah. I'm not, it wasn't that I was talented, it was just that they promoted it in Irish pubs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was also very talented. And we, yeah, so I, I went, ended up winning that and then uh, became a reporter, producer um, for them. Wow. Which is really like, cool. When you're talking there about the Food Network, by the way, I don't know, we don't necessarily have a We don't have the Food Network the, here. And whenever I'm in the States, I, I remember that I used to just put the Food Network on in the background and there would just be, it would just be constant cooking yeah, shows. it's constant it's food. Just, it's constant food, yeah. but I loved it. But the viewers are, it's insane. You're obsessed it's with like, food. It's a common denominator. We all eat food. We do all eat food. Do you food. know, it's like when you're trying to find those interests in people, everybody loves food. Food. It's, I, I think I interact with my followers on Instagram more about food than yeah. anything else. You enjoy like, pizza? I absolutely love pizza. Yeah. And like, it's just, it's like, it's a sandwich. Yeah. There you go. That's my argument. It's a sandwich, okay? It's so a if you're very eating a sandwich because people are like sandwich. Yeah. yeah. And listen, I I I'm not one of uh, like I'm lucky enough <laughs> that you now if it was my sister always laughs because she's like I hate sharing a pizza with you because I actually do only eat one or two slices of the pizza. Right, okay. And my yeah. sister's like and then I have to eat the rest because it's just there. Yeah. So I'm lucky enough that I am one of those people that I'm, I'm pretty satisfied after one slice or two yeah. slices. Because everyone's I've like, how do you always to, eat pizza? Yeah, I wouldn't be able to eat a full pizza. It's yeah. like, okay, my weakness is crisps. Mm. I cannot just have one crisp. I need the entire bag and yeah. another bag. Yeah. So pizza's not my weakness in that yeah. kind of way. That's why I enjoy it so much. I'm like, it is actually a sandwich. Just yeah. put some rocket lettuce on it. Boom. So, so, um, the, so the food situation was a good situation. But going back into entertainment yeah. kind of... Oh, Did that like, feel very much like, oh, this is this is what I want to do. This is a little bit more my niche in terms of even the production element. Yeah, of it? completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like you know, it was the, all the the other gigs kind of just equaled this in yeah. the connection way. They kept me alive because I earned money through them. Yeah, I got to meet some amazing people. I got to go, like uh, ex you know go and go to the U.S. and film all these things and have this amazing experience from it all. So it all led to being back in entertainment, but entertainment is always where I wanted to be, you know? Yeah. It was just that, it need, I guess, you know, like life is, it just needed to find your path and yeah. find your way in there. Um, so, so yeah, when I got back into entertainment, it was amazing. And it's like entertainment tonight, which is like entertainment tonight. It's like the biggest. It's massive, uh, It's right? so huge yeah, and it's, it's directly massive. linked with the LA one. So you'd be yeah. working with both of them all the time. And yeah, I mean, it was it was really incredible. It just, yeah. I don't know how that worked out, but it somehow worked out. And I loved working with them. It was kind of funny though, because where the studios were, it was basically um, like the Ballymount of Toronto. Okay. So I was living downtown in Toronto yeah. and I was driving out to the Ballymount of Toronto. So it was right. kind of funny. It wasn't glam at all. It's, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> not that Ballymount isn't glam. The apple green there, a very nice, a nice addition over the last year. <laughs> Sensational. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when you're, you think that the... It's not as glamorous as people think. You think that it's like middle of downtown kind of yeah. like New York-esque kind like of thing. Like an episode of The Hills, basically. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I loved working there. Um, and I was, a, like I said, a content producer, mainly working on online. I would do some reporting for them for the show, but they were they were really leaders when it came to online, uh, especially with their show over yeah. there. Because that was, um, 
it would have been about four or five years ago. Yeah, yeah about four, yeah, five years ago. And um, so like, digital was like huge, yeah, and massive. It, like they were putting so much time into it. Like the digital team was growing at a ridiculous pace. Yeah, the pace. Um, and uh, I, I was lucky to be part of that, which was amazing. So they they would you know focus. It would be equal half and half on the show and on digital, and you yeah. can see that from their digital content is absolutely yeah. incredible, and um, the team there have done such great things. So I was so lucky to be part of it, yeah. um, writing articles, producing content. My editing came into it, which was yeah. great. I was like, they were like, you can also edit, and I was like, in Ireland we do everything. Yeah. <laughs> do you have a political show you want me to go on and read the tweets? <laughs> I'm a tech reporter. Yeah, too. exactly. Yeah. Any sharks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it was it was really oh, it was brilliant. I loved it. I loved yeah. every second of being involved in it. And also I love the hosts there, like the TV presenters, yeah. are like the glamest. You know, it's like really cheesy glam as okay. well. Okay. Like you would if you know the way you you when you're in the States and you watch yeah. those kind of shows, like the way they read their intonation is just so different to ours. Yes. Not saying that our hosts aren't glam over here. We're just a bit different. It's yeah. just different, you know? It is. We never kind of say things the way they do or we wouldn't have the same kind of content yeah we wouldn't be focusing on those kind of, like i don't yeah. know it's it's a over here it's a bit more i don't know uh, relatable yeah are they like that off camera or are they, do, do they maintain that kind of glam <laughs> they are quite kind of like that. Yeah. yeah they're kind of like they just doesn't get surprise placed. me yeah, yeah. like <laughs> like almost just like a glam bot who then yeah. comes in front of the camera and then exactly yeah. like lovely people yeah. brilliant but yeah they're just they are gl the glamest of but glam but I, I do feel like sometimes in in america and in canada as well they're not necessarily looking for relatability, you know. No, like the, they don't the want TV that. people are TV people, and, and they live in the TV for a reason. Exactly, and, and you can't touch you can't them. Touch them. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what it don't is. Don't touch them. Yeah, they are very special. Yeah, you will never be them. Yeah, but I mean, I kind of get what they're going for. Amazing. I suppose, yeah. With that. yeah, it's. I just. I don't think you get away with it as much over here because, like, get over yourself. I, I, well, that's the whole mentality, isn't it? Like, <laughs> come, on, is come on down. Exactly. Come on down from the pedestal. Oh, there. there's your one. Yeah, yeah the amount of people that. Were I was like, oh, you're actually quite nice. I didn't think you'd be that nice because you're on expose. And I'm like, sorry, I don't know how I gave that off. But Yeah, I also don't know how to like, answer oh, that. I could also not be nice. <laughs> yeah, that's a rude thing for someone to say to you as well. But anyway, um, so why'd you leave then? Why'd you, why'd you come back? Why did I leave? I, you know it what? It sounds like it was I an was, incredible... It was, in, it was absolutely incredible. Um, <coughs> every, it was great. It was mm. brilliant. I loved it. Um, had a nice setup. Had a nice... Uh, I, like, I know it's, it sounds funny. But I didn't feel right. I wasn't happy. Right. I, and I am definitely one to listen to me mm -hmm. um, and how I feel. I miss my family so much. Yeah. It was the year my granddad had died and we we're really close with my grandparents. They live next door to us. And it like, even like I, coming home from Toronto to get to my granddad, like he passed mm. away just before I was getting my flight. And I was like, even six hour flight, it was a six hour flight. And that can get in the way of, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's like, hard when, when things like that happen as well, because it really, it kind of brings back what the really important things are. What is life about? Yeah. Life, it's so incredible to have a job and have a job that you love and to thrive and all those kind of things. But like, at the end of the day, life is about the people who surround you and who you're laughing with. Life, yeah. like, is a, for me, is about my family and yeah. uh, they're so important to me. And I, I miss them so much. Like my sister came over that, that uh, summer and she, got, she came over for a bit because she was studying to be a lawyer. Boring. <laughs> um, <laughs> is she a lawyer she's now? She's amazing. She's a lawyer now. Yeah, it's all done, Alex. Um, is she, she bored or is she? No, she's actually surprisingly funny. Okay. Yeah, she's, mm. she's one of those ones. Yeah. Um, oh, actually, lots of lawyers are very fun. <laughs> <laughs> I grew to learn that. I should have been one. Because um, cool. remember, I described myself as fun. Ah, ah, at the beginning. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. So she came over for about five weeks, and I was saying goodbye to her was the saddest thing I have ever done, and I'll never forget it. And we cried and cried, and I cried for us. I couldn't go into. I had to work from home. I was like, I actually can't go yeah. in. Like I was physically sick, and I was so upset. Yeah. And did you I'm, feel lonely, or was it more homesick? Like, cause I do think they're two different feelings you know yeah. what I mean? like you can be surrounded by people and still have this gut-wrenching homesickness yeah. you know and it's I, an awful feeling yeah I think that's that's just what I had yeah. I just felt like I was I was mi not missing out but like all the little things all the barbecues during the summer in mm. our fam like in our family home and all those tiny little th even going to Dundrum with like my cousins and their kids which I do like 
don't go to Dundrum with them because that's a bit busy and too, that's a lot of effort. But mm. we do other things. And yeah. I just, like, I see my cousins and their kids all the time and it's so easy. And I, th that's what I was, I guess, living for. I didn't yeah. have that. You know, I had, I had my girlfriend at the time and um, I had, you know, her friends as well who were incredible and they were like a little family. But like, I had had a few years with them and that was great. Yeah. I wanted to be back with my close enough to my family. Yeah. I just really miss them. So anyone you know living away, they definitely live with a little bit of heartbreak That's all the it. time. It's, it's funny, very like, tough. I actually sometimes I get messages from people who listen to this show in Australia and in Canada and America, which is amazing when I get yeah. messages from them on Instagram and stuff like that. A lot of them say, I love listening to the show because it does remind me of what's going on at home. And yeah. Just even things like that is... It's lovely to get those messages, but also a little bit heartbreaking as well, because you're like, oh, I know. Like everybody's everybody's okay. <laughs> Everyone is okay. Yeah. Everybody's it okay. Is, like, listen, and you it's still lovely to live away. Exactly. Yeah. And listen, now I'm like, oh, I'd love to live away again. Yeah. It's nice to dip in and out if Absolutely. you can. Um, but it, I just was, I wasn't feeling right. And mm. I, I was a gun listened thing. to me yeah. and um, saying goodbye to Alex was too sad. And I was like, I'm not spending my life saying goodbye to her. Um, there's no way. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so then pretty much it happened quite quickly after that. We were at a wedding over here in the October and then I booked, I booked as soon as we got back from that wedding, I was like, I can't be here anymore. Yeah. And I booked a flight and went to London. And my girlfriend was following uh, in a few months. Mm. So, so that wasn't of, a breakup, it was like... No, it ended up being a breakup, oops. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but then we got back together. Say oops. <laughs> oops. No, but then we got back together. And then we went through another breakup. Yeah, yeah, I know. Amazing. I read the papers, yeah. Nancy. I, God. I read the papers. How boring. <laughs> um, maybe we'll get back together again and break up again. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. not. Um, yeah, so we, so yeah, then that, like, I went to London and I was there for about six, seven months. Got an incredible job in London. Love, loved working there. I was working back in like proper digital. So I kind of yeah. moved in then to more, let's say, advertising side, but mm. I was still producing yeah. um, as, as well, which was great and like account managing and things like that. So uh, I worked for a company called Cult London, okay. run by two extremely ambitious, um, hardworking, creative women uh, who just like blew me away when I got to meet them and yeah. have a meeting with them. I was like, there's no way they're going to give me a job. And uh, they did. And I got to work there with them for those few months. And then this came up over here, Expose. And yeah. I think it's just one of those things you can't really say no to. It's yeah. not going to happen much in your life. Like. Do you want to be on TV? Yeah. No. Um, That's it. You kind of just have to yeah, take I, it. And I'd, Expose is so... It's so huge here that I was like... Massive. Oh, yeah. And established and long running as well. Exactly. And I was like, I just thought, took it as a sign. You'd, I'd moved out of TV from moving from Toronto to London. And then when they came up, I was like, is that like a little sign to just maybe go back in yeah. for a bit? And I guess it was. I accepted it. Um, left London, came here within like a month. Yeah. Um, and then I, myself and my ex got back together. So then she mm. was moving over here. So it was great. Um, and everything kind of just worked out and was lovely like for a while, which is amazing. And then that expose was nothing but great to yeah. me. Uh, it gave me so much experience. I got to meet Helen Mirren. That's the coolest thing ever. Um, and so many people and learned so much about people and learned so much about me. Um, and yeah, so I, I, it's, it's all worked out. It's all been great. I was yeah. there three and a half years. It's, but it, like, you know, it's, it's definitely three and a half years, three and a half years, which is amazing. And, you know, uh, obviously with Expose finishing, uh, last the other day, yeah. um, it, people are like, you know, it's uh, like, it's sad and all that. And I was like, it, it's, I think it's more sad just that the show's finished yeah. for me. I think it's, it's three and a half years. That's a good time to kind of move forward and move on, Absolutely, you know, yeah. um, and I, I like obviously to move here to her is absolutely incredible. That all works out. Hold up the pillow. That all works out up the pretty pillow. well. And yeah, that's look at it. Been a very, very nice For the people nice listening, move. Cassie Stokes is sitting here with our beautiful her branding on a pillow. Yes, emblazoned. I can take this home now. Yeah, you can't have that. <laughs> but we'll get we'll get you one, Cassie. Her. Can I put it yeah. on? Can I put it on my new girlfriend? Yeah. Her. <laughs> you can't have it. <laughs> um, so it's funny because when the news broke that Expose was finishing. Uh, everybody was was pretty sad. Everybody was yeah. tweeting about it. There was a huge reaction to it, and it's so funny because you don't. I don't think people understand when something becomes an institution. You're yeah. not like working in it and being like, I work in an institution. No, but it could come to an end. Yeah, but expose like, it's been around a long, long time, time, like yeah. over a decade, yeah. right? And to have an entertainment show 
that's running in its various guises because it did change. I could tell that it was kind of changing with the times. Yeah. And it did different things with formatting and all this kind of stuff. Um, but were there whisperings internally? Because like the last episode aired there on Friday, you know, like it's done and dusted now and, yeah. it, and it ran a, a lovely tribute. And, you know, literally I've only seen positive things about it, which yeah. is great. But were there whisperings within before? Uh, not really. But yeah. then again, I think maybe there were whisperings for years. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, did anyone know whether Expose was going to be around forever? Yeah. No. Yeah. You know, I'd say it's probably the same with every single show that's out there. There's always going to be like, oh, oh. But no, I didn't really have an idea. Yeah. Um, or a, a time like, like, again, I was kind of just, I guess, focusing on me as you do yeah. and you're kind of like I, I'd enjoyed my time there I'd done my three and a half years and I really loved it so when it I was told about it I was like okay you know sometimes like a an end of something well always an end of something is the beginning of something else yeah you just have to take your head and spin it in a nice way and look yeah. at it in a positive way and for me um you know again it was sad about the show that yeah. the show was ending um so like you could hear I mean I feel like they're always there's always whispers about there's, there's like some, someone's building. There's I someone's love building that someone's building. <laughs> well, see, like it sounds like they're building directly beside us. Oh, someone building your couch. Maybe it's a is that a leaf blower? I don't know. Anyway, it's fine. The people who are listening, that's what's the, happening. Yeah, there's building going on. This is live. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's building going on here. It's and progressive. Color, Things are yeah. progressing. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, uh, so like I said, it was it was sad about the show. Um. That for everyone, because it is an institution. Yeah. I mean, even when I lived away, every, you just know Expose as Irish. That's it. Yeah. Um, and the people that you worked with as well were amazing. Like, I would yeah. see you out and about sometimes at press conferences, and you always had this one camera guy with you, and I can't remember his name. Ronan or Jer. Because I'm either the worst. Or. Jer, I think. Jer, yeah. Either like Ronan I've or met Jer. Jer a good few times, and it's just nice. It was always like you'd get up there and it'd be very quick, fast, do yeah. your thing, and then you'd be off again. But like, the pace at which you guys worked was. Astronomical as well, yeah, like, and you were great. busy straight. I think people sometimes think like, oh, the glamour of TV, you're there and you're in studio and you, yeah. you get to wear your nice clothes and your hair and makeup is beautiful and stuff, but you're running around town constantly. Oh yeah, no, running around all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're <laughs> eating lunch in the car, the amount of... And then you're editing and doing your VOs yeah. and everything like that as well, like, which, you know, a lot of people didn't necessarily yeah, know Yeah, I know, as which well. is, I, like, when I... Uh, when people would ask me, well, so what are your hour, what are your hours? And I'm like, no, normal hours pretty much. And then yeah. like evenings and weekends. But they'd be like, oh, you don't just kind of go and do that your thing. And I'm like, no, we kind of have to edit when we're not doing our thing, which is amazing. Like, yeah. I love that side of it because I do. I love, truly love both sides of it. Yeah. I'm, if I wasn't going to be on TV ever again, it's not the end of me. Yeah. Uh, like, that's not what I live for. But I think that's one I of the enjoy things. I Yeah, and so, like, when we were talking about your career there, like, you have a huge repertoire of production as well. Like, I'm like a kid in a candy store right now as well. I'm like, don't tell everybody in here the amount of stuff that you can do. So right, Cassie, get into the edit suite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just get Where in there and edit. Me? Oh, no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, should. like, that's one of the things that I think not a lot of people knew about Expose, but, you know, hard, hard working. Oh, everyone's really hard working. And yeah. they're a great team. Mm. And I, I will miss the team so much. But our team did kind of, a, f a few people moved on to different shows a few months back. So yeah. that was a bit... I think it was, it's a bit easier to take because there's only five of us left then yeah. doing this for the last few months. Um, so I'll definitely miss the team so much, but I've gained like new friends from it. Patrick Kavanagh, who yeah. works for Stellar Magazine. Yes. He is one of my best friends. He's amazing. And we became better friends when he moved away because we didn't have to have the little work balance. He Got didn't it. have to ask me to do things I didn't want to do and I didn't have to tell him, no, I'm yeah. not doing it. Yeah. Um, and so, he's doing great at Stellar as well. Exactly. I was talking to him there the other day. Yeah. Um, you'll see him on everyone's Instagram story. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's such a great person. Uh, Glenda's one of my great friends. She's so amazing. She's taught me so much. Yeah. Um, and like all of them, Azzy, like just there's so many of them. Debbie O'Donnell, yeah. you know, she's definitely one of my mentors. She's Incredible. Mm. She kind of brought Expose to yeah. a life. She mm. made it the, the glam it is. Um, so yeah, so it was uh, all those people. I'll definitely miss all the people, but I definitely for me, I think it's it's a, been a great, a great time for me to move yeah. forward. And maybe sometimes you do need the push, I think uh, whereas so, yeah. you just get a bit comfortable. Um, and so, so digital push is moving me back into digital. But it's not as if you haven't been in digital before. That's no, kind exactly. of the funny thing about it. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you know, the reaction, I suppose, 
I was getting lots of questions like, what is Cassie yeah. doing with what you is, guys? What is Cassie actually doing? Yeah. I was like, who knows? <laughs> no one knows. No. We're going to talk I'm, about it after we record the show. She's, yeah, she's exactly. Gonna know, I'll find out. No. Yeah. I'm uh, coming in as presenter, producer. Mm. Like, oh, you know, kind of, you do everything yeah. here. Well, like, see, you do notes. So lot, I'm going to be a second you. A lot of people <laughs> do a lot of things in digital. And yeah. I think that's, you know, so I was getting, well, first off, I was getting a lot of, like, that's incredible that Cassie is going to you. I think, you know, because Expose was so prolific, people were watching what the next steps or the next chapter, as you said, was going to be. People. Yeah, exactly. They kind people. of want to yeah. see where they're going. And so what was the reaction that, that you were getting then when like, then I was just like, for God's sake, yeah, just, you were like, just say, say it, say Kyle. It, Kyle. Um, I was like, she's not going to get this. No, and, totally and our get working it. relationship just is going to be weird if friends, she doesn't watch friends. Yeah. I was like, oh, just <laughs> say it, Kyle. Who doesn't watch friends? Yeah. Okay. It was, like, uh, uh, the reaction has been absolutely incredible. I also, you know, extra incredible because I think, well, they think it's a, it's a great partnership. Yeah. It's, um, I, I've been in digital, so a lot of people that know me know that I have already been there and kind of <coughs> was, me. was looking, you know, and yeah. I'm very interested in moving back towards and it's definitely where, you know, as uh, Anne-Marie Tomczak, who, uh, who was um, way up in uh, Vogue. Vogue in the UK. Yeah, she's been on the show. She's incredible. She is incredible. Mm. She wrote on my post, she was like, uh, great move, um, uh, you know, I'll always love TV, but digital is where it's at. Yes. And I think that was the perfect way to describe it. Um, you can do so, TV is incredible, it's mm. brilliant, it's there. Um, but you can do so much in digital and especially at her. Yeah. I, you know, I talk to all of you, I know so many of you yeah. just from uh, being out and about at different mm. events. You guys do everything and it seems mm. that that there is, if, if you have an idea, you can kind of go with it. There yeah. isn't, there is that freedom to an extent in television, uh, but not as, it doesn't happen as fast. Do you know, yeah. like digital is instant. So if you have a good idea, you can move forward with it. And that's what I absolutely loved about being in it before. Yeah. It's just like, go with it. If you can make it work, you can do yeah. it. Uh, you guys have like incredible access to mm. things. You have incredible facilities. Like yeah. the studios are amazing. Yeah. Um, so it just, it just, for me, seemed right. And then all the reaction is like, yeah. yes. But well, I did get people actually saying after they'd found out, you know, that I'd lost my job and that I was finishing up in a week. Yeah. Um, would you look into going, like talking to someone maybe in her or, you know, in Maximum Media yeah. and they're doing loads. And I was like, Ooh. I was like, oh, you might find out by the end of the week. Yeah. And meanwhile, this had been happening. Um, wow. So, okay. So when um, it was announced, I think people were just like, that's. Yeah. Ideal. Um, I, I, it's great. It's, it's, it's incredible that you were talking there about kind of the ideas and stuff because I think that's one of the things that's so crucial and what I love about my job the most. Yeah. Like because very very busy, obviously. Like, but I think in the media everybody's busy. You know, yeah. I don't even think that's really anything. Yeah, that, it's that kind of like busy. Okay. Yeah, like, like I mean, everybody's you're working. Busy. You're working. Anyone, you're busy. If you're at home looking after kids, you're busy. Exactly. It, like you're every, busy. Everybody's busy. <laughs> but I think it's that thing about like you know, in Maximum in particular with her and as well like across all of the platforms, Sports Joe and Joe, and her family as well. Like, they really do nurture the idea yeah. aspect of the people. So even if you're running around like a crazy person at times, you know, if you have a strong concept, yeah, you know, they will let you develop that. I mean, that's what happened with Girls With Goals. You yeah. know, like I came here with it and I was just like, I can't do it where I am. I Can I do, do it here? Yeah. And they and were like, absolutely. And they were like, this is what this is for, you know? So they were looking at the development of things, yeah. you know, at a time when the digital landscape was very, very different. And I think that's going to just continue. And it's one of those things that like, the idea aspect is what really attracted me to yeah. digital in the first place. Cause I was like, okay, you know, you can slave away in radio, you can slave away in TV. Like sometimes you'll get to make that documentary or, or stuff like this, but it's just different. It's like, really it, different. It, it's just different. And it's hard to kind of like differentiate the two when you're like, well, why couldn't you have done done that where you were? And it's just like, it's it's just, it's a different world. It's a digital. different world. It takes yeah. a lot more time um, and it can actually happen quite instantly here, which yeah. is great in two ways. You can, it can happen instantly. It can be a success and it can happen instantly and it could be, you know, a learning curve or a failure, it. as we call them. Yeah. So it's like you can you learn pretty quick. Well, it's when like you're that in, didn't work. When you're in the industry that's like changing and evolving so fast, yeah. it's almost like, okay, well, if that didn't work, like what's the next thing that's that's working? You're like looking at trends and you're yeah. seeing 
where things are going to go. And, and it's so, so interesting. Even yeah. look at like Samantha Barry, head of Glamour, and yeah. how she, you know, got got involved in tech, like in yeah. included like in was it the two 2016 elections? Were there yeah. was those were those or the 2014 elections? Mm. When was the last election? Anyway. It probably was 2016, wasn't it? Might have been 14. Uh, 14. Um, was she involved? Yeah, exactly. She had, uh, like, uh, was doing all these videos on, like, Snapchat. Yeah. Like, uh, that was involved, for, like, uh, from the get-go for her. That's yeah. where she saw it going. And I'm, I'm sure that idea, like, are you joking, interviewing Donald Trump on Snapchat? Yeah. No. I like, know. do you know what I mean? So but it's that's just, the thing, like, yeah. And you can see that now in the work that she's doing with the digital covers amazing. and stuff she's like that. Amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, the writing's on the wall, really. So that's cool. So I'm thrilled. Yeah, I'm thrilled. And I'm coming in uh, with, like, fashion in mind, which is yeah. amazing. Obviously, I'm coming well, from exposing. Well, this is it. We can't so. give... Now, this is the thing. So people are asking, we can't give away too much yeah. of what's coming down the line. Exactly. But... Let's say fashion. Let's say... Well, there's, there's fashion. <laughs> there's but everything, there's but it's, I know. That's the thing. It's kind of like, eh. I wonder what we can say now, which mm. won't get us in trouble. But, yes... Lots of projects. <laughs> Lots of projects. You're going to be so Exciting busy. ideas. Yeah. I can't wait. I'm so excited to be busy with like, and work on a, a really creative and progressive team. Not that I wasn't, but yeah. like you said, it, the digital, digital makes it move faster and things happen and you can kind of just come up with ideas. Um, and I am literally a body full of ideas, yeah. which is why I loved working in digital from the get-go yeah. um so i'm i'm so excited and to work together because yeah. that's what i also got from talking to people here is that you know if you have an idea and you're kind of like can you kind of help me with this idea because yeah. i think you could bring this you guys seem to work together it's and the collaborative process I, yeah i am a person like i can work well on my own but mm. i am a team player down to the core i absolutely love it because yeah. i think there's so much you can bring to things when you all work together and i feel like that's what you get here and yeah. Maxim Media is a leader mm. when it comes to content. So I've said it before, it's where I want to be, and I, like I, I'm thrilled that I get to be here. Like it's it's great. I, it's so exciting. I start in a few weeks, and I'm where just are you absolutely sit? buzzing. Where are we have you have a seat for me. Yeah. I'll just stay here. I don't think we do yet, <laughs> but we'll find you one. I'm gonna make sure. Hold on, my parking's okay. All right, okay, yeah, we do got to wrap up actually because that guy <laughs> outside is just being absolutely. Park okay, a hold on. Head belt. Are you reparking? Yes, reparking. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Do you have signal in here? That's okay. Yeah. I've got four minutes. Four minutes. Okay, go. so in four minutes, what we <laughs> Sorry, what, I was just what, like, oh, you know, when you go out and yeah. you're clamped. Um, so to wrap up, we can tell you guys what's coming down the line, but <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those things. We've got, you know, uh, when like bloggers post very important meetings or yeah. busy at meetings. That's coming soon. Meetings. Hashtag coming soon. Hashtag lots coming lots of soon. Cassie Stokes content. It's going to be incredible. Um, I suppose final word from you, you know, obviously Virgin Media are moving in a, in a different direction. And one of the reasons that they, they spoke about kind of getting rid of Expose was to do with costs and stuff like that. Do yeah. you think that entertainment and that kind of lifestyle content is all going to start careening into the digital sphere like full time? Is that where you think it's all going to live? I would imagine so. Yeah. yeah. But there always be a dabble of it throughout, you know, yeah. um, every show, you yeah. know, every daytime show on TV, on the radio, because we kind of live for it. Like, we yeah. still love talking, you know, m most radio shows, the content's filled with talking about Justin Bieber, the Kardashians, that kind of stuff. You yeah. still want a bit of it. Definitely. It's still like everything that's happening in every day. So it'll be sprinkled throughout. Be there, but yeah. I think the first place you go for your entertainment and what's happening now is... Yeah. Digital. It's right there, isn't it? Scroll, scroll, it's right scroll. Here. It's what we're going to be bringing. It's right here. Yeah, yeah. it's right here at her. <laughs> Cassie Stokes, it's been a pleasure getting to know you a little bit more. There you and go. everybody stay tuned. It's only going to be a few weeks until you're going to be seeing Cassie too on. Too much. Uh, too much. No, just the perfect amount <laughs> on all of our platforms. And uh, yeah, we can't, we can't wait. I know. I'm so excited. Okay, let Thank me you. Uh, let you go and, and get your car. Okay, going to go. Because the first thing we don't want you, we don't want you being clamped. You don't need that. I don't, I don't I'll want charge that you for it. As your experience of Girls with Goals. <laughs>